Flowchat fam, hey, Chris here with the Spotlight Series. We have an incredible, incredible guest today. In fact, he has been focused in a particular industry, the energy industry. And he hasn't been, in this channel, we focus on real people getting real results. Let me talk, let me tell something here. We're not talking about one year of results or five years or even 10 years. There is, if I'm not mistaken, four decades of results in the uh, energy industry. And we bring the best on this channel. And that is exactly what you're getting today. Hey, Flow Chat fam. Hey, so I want to welcome Mr. George Wentz. George, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, man. Great to see you, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, before, we're, we're going to go all kinds of fun places. We're going to be talking about crypto and clean energy versus dirty energy and what the technology behind all this is. But let me share with the audience, uh, before we hear your story, let me share with the audience something that really grabbed my attention for our conversation, why I feel is going to be perfectly relevant for everyone listening, watching. It was this phrase, imagine a world where everyone has the internet. Imagine a world where like batteries aren't even needed. And I was like, stop it. And then I started hearing a little bit more. Like, oh great here we go i'm gonna have a conversation about this because i have that's a, george still honestly personally that's a massive gap for me i'm like how on earth does that take place i know you probably can't share everything or you'd have to kill me so i'm gonna do my best kind of meet you somewhere in between today but before we go that direction i want people to understand the magnitude of what you've already accomplished and and the amount of time that you've spent in the space that you have so what was your what's your trade i'm an attorney actually i graduated from Georgetown Law School in 1983. Yeah. And I grew up on the East Coast. I moved down to Louisiana and I got involved in the energy business uh, from 1983 on as an attorney. And I've represented every aspect of the energy business over the years and uh, till now. And uh, so that's my background. I, um, I've always looked at what was going on uh, and felt that there was a better way to do it. And as I got older, I thought, you know, hey, I've, I've pretty well made my, uh, I don't, I don't need to do a lot at this point in time financially, you know, th through the grace of God. I mean, hallelujah for that. But what I what I want to do is I want to try to give back and give the experience that um, that that me and the, and the folks I've worked with have, have gained in how we can actually change the world for the better here with what we have left. I've got at least a good 15 years left, baby, and maybe more. Let's go. But, uh, Let's you know, go. so I want to, I want to make the most of it and I want to do the best. I've learned an awful lot and I've, and I've got relationships globally and I want to use those to make the world a better place while I still can. Uh, and I, I think your, your skill set, your knowledge and experience really position you well to, to actually pull this off. And I think that's worth everyone hearing because we focus on real people getting real results. I, I, I've heard you articulate this in, in different settings where there's people that talk about ideas, but then there's people that have actually been on the, the, the ground floor that right. have been to the facilities that have been, you know, seen what's actually taking place, decisions made. How did that pan out over the next five, 10 years? You've lived through all that. Yeah, and so <clears throat> that's a, you know, that's a thing. I mean, you know, when it's all said and done, there'll be more said than done. I'm sure you've heard that, <clears throat> you know, but uh, when it comes to guys like John Kerry and uh, the folks down at Davos and the World Economic Forum uh, coming to us and telling us how they're going to give us energy and how they're going to make us dependent on them for our energy. No, I have to push back. We're not for that. Uh, we've lived in this in this industry for all of my life. Uh, all the folks I've brought to MAD have, have massive experience in the energy field. They know how to make it work. We've made it work. Uh, the folks uh, at Davos and all the politicians on Capitol Hill, I don't know one of them that has ever produced or transmitted an electric Electron in their life. Uh, so why are they telling us how to how to clean up the energy sector of the world and deliver clean but yet reliable energy? And that's a real, you know, there's a trick to that. But that's what we're focused on here at MAD. We make it work. And here's here's and can and can you share with everyone what uh, MAD stands for? Make a difference. You know, we when we started this, uh, we were thinking, uh, you know, what do we want to do? Well, everybody in the whole thing, we're all we're all people who have been in this industry for a long time. And what we want to do, we're, we're at a paradigm shift. We are at a massive paradigm shift. When is wealth made? Wealth is made during a paradigm shift. Par you know, look at Bezos uh, from bookstores to online sale of books to online sale of absolutely everything. Massive paradigm shift. Now he's worth hundreds of billions of dollars. You know, you got a guy like, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Elon Musk, who is, uh, you know, going from fossil fuel powered cars to electric power cars. He was in the beginning with PayPal 
right? Going from uh, writing out a paper check to electronic checks. So when you have these paradigm shifts, you have the opportunity to create massive wealth. And this is what we're bringing to the people through MAD, because what we wanted to do is make a difference by allowing the people to be the solution to the energy transition problem. And that's what yes. MAD is, that's what MAD is doing. So, th and that's, that's a perfect lead in to um, why, why I was so excited to you know, bring you on uh, to talk to our audience. Cause we're all business owners. Like if you're watching, listening to this right now, you're like, okay, you guys are talking about energy. Like what the heck does this have to do with my, my business? Well, keep listening because yeah. <laughs> there, there's some big shifts happening to, to um, two, things that we'll, we'll cover. One, I know, uh, George, there's a couple of things you wanted to share, but the other one is we're talking about a transfer. There's a lot of money to be made in, in transfer. And so every entrepreneur should be listening to, to that piece. But let's start, George, with there's a couple ideas, things that you, I know, wanted to share in terms of why, the, why does this apply to a business owner? Well, <clears throat> you know, um, energy is really the core of everything. So when you look at where we are today, uh, Imagine this. Imagine that you can live on the top of a mountain with no electrical wires coming to your home. And imagine that you can get up in the morning and have a totally electrically powered house on top of a mountain with no roads. Why don't you need roads? Well, because you're going to call up on your global internet. <clears throat> um, you're going to call up a uh, quadcopter that is going to automatically come to your house. It's autonomous. It's going to land. You're going to go on your map program where you want to go to, and it's going to take you there. Why can it do that? It can do that because of energy. Why can you live up there with no electrical wires and no roads because of energy? Energy is really the root of everything that we do. And it is massively important. And when there is a shift from wire technology to wireless technology, look at everything it does. We have a wonderful example just with these cell phones, right? You know, I've never been able before when I was when I was, you know, I mean, I was born in uh, 1958, guys. So, I mean, I've seen a lot. Right. And, uh, you know, going just 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 the idea of going from taxi cabs to Ubers was because of that phone. Now there are almost no taxi cabs anywhere. It's all Ubers. Right. So these types of shifts, they, they, they impact everyone. And when you when you have those transitions, they impact every single business owner. Should you uh, should you short rubber tires? Well, if my vision of the future is right, I'm going to be short in a good year, right? Because there aren't going to be tires. There are going to be quadcopters, right? So how does that impact you? How does it impact, should I have an office? Should I, be, should I have everyone together in an office? Or could I have them connected over global internet that, that, is, that has no latency whatsoever, that is carrying on a wave that is bound within an electromagnetic field that encompasses the earth? These things are here. They're real. They're now. I've seen them. We can make them happen. I'm dedicated to making all that vision come true in the next 10 years. So all of that, all of that change is the technologies that Matt is working on right now, that Matt is supporting, that Matt is rolling out. Clean, but yet it changes and transforms everything. Every business owner will be impacted and they need to know what's coming. You need to know what's happening because it's happening. So this brings up some incredible, you said a lot of huge things. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 and, that, and that's why I love it. That's why I love it. Cause it's that like smack you in the face. Like, wait, what did he just say? I don't have to sit in traffic. I get to fly. And I like a, a fun, like yeah. side personal note. Like I'm the, when it comes to lines, like it's my kryptonite. It's like an aller. Like I can't, it's a rash on my side. I can't stand. Yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm like, Babe, like this is exactly why you know reason number 117 that i need a helicopter because what, what we could just fly where we need to so yeah, yeah. it's funny that that's well, you're not like a pilot thing. right so you need an you need a, you need an autonomous <laughs> helicopter but you don't really need a helicopter you need a quadcopter that's where it's going buddy that's what we're going to yeah. be so yeah. so i need pictures we need to talk about that so that was one fun direction <laughs> but keep stay focused with business owners and, and no, number one there's multiple businesses that want geographic freedom and flexibility right. so what you're proposing mm -hmm. is that's one immediate application. Uh, n number two, number two that needs that we need to keep an eye on this is is why our clients, our consumers, the market, market behavior. Um, right. So, how is that going to affect the the selling and the acquisition process, um, and and just how how people do business in general? There's a huge shift of 
consumers coming online a lot more comfortable with Zoom. For example, I used to be in, in BNI and, you, you know, BNI people listening, watching that or hem, local chamber of commerce, we'd all meet what once a week in person. It's all virtual now. Now they're meeting, doing all groups across the country because they're like, this is a great mm -hmm. idea. You know, you, you've you've already known this, George. And for myself, like I, I've been completely virtual the last five, six years. So when you say it's coming, it's already came. <laughs> and, and now it's becoming more it has actually yeah. already come. <clears throat> you know, I have a, I have four wonderful daughters and a son, and one of my daughters is in the insurance industry. Hmm. And um, they went over the course of the past year entirely 100% virtual. And so has everybody else. I mean, uh, you know, COVID accelerated that whole process. The entire legal industry has gone virtual. We now have depositions via via zoom we have hearings via zoom we don't see judges live anymore there's a massive change in all of that how does that impact uh, the airlines right how does that impact if you're in the travel yeah. industry how does that impact you if you are in the uh you know hotel industry how does that impact you if you're in the office industry office building industry it it impacts you massively with all of these changes you have you know if i'm a business owner i'm gonna and, and i am uh, I want to be ahead of, uh, of the curve on this. And, and yeah. when, when you see, if you can just wrap your mind around <clears throat> the wireless delivery of commercial grade power globally safely. Now that's a mouthful, but that's going to happen. That is coming. The technology is here. I've seen it. We I've been down and actually it's been demonstrated. So when I left the first time about five years ago, my head was exploding because I'm thinking of everything that this changes. It changes massive aspects of what we do. First of all, you know, gasoline stations in the entire petroleum industry. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah. You're, if you're a business owner that is servicing fossil fuel industries, you, you, you have to understand that there's going to be a transition during which you know, you don't want to be the guy making buggy whips when we're going to the horseless carriage, right? Uh, you want to be the business yeah. owner that is at the cutting edge of all of this. And if you understand that there will be autonomous vehicles that are operated through the course of this wave that encompasses the earth, that carries information, carries data, and delivers safely electricity globally, it changes absolutely everything. And if you're a business owner, you need to be able to think about that. A it's lot of business owner, but it's happening. Not right. So, so, the, we're, and we're just kind of getting warmed up here because you've, it's come up a couple times and, and I think it's where we need to go next and it's around the tech. Um, so with, with tech, you know, you, you have this experience where it blew your mind. And I mentioned at the beginning um, for me, I, it, it's not far fetched. I'm like, I'm sure the technology is out there, but that's where it is out there. I, global, global internet. You mentioned some magnetic thing around the earth. I'm like, can you, can you, can we start closing that gap for at least me personally? <laughs> sure. Sure. So <clears throat> years ago, there were two competing ways of making waves to carry yeah. anything, right? Okay. You and I are discussing right now through Hertzian technology. Hertzian technology carries is produces a wave that goes 360 degrees all it goes straight up it goes everywhere Any as direction. it goes out from wherever it emanates right okay imagine how inefficient that is it's not directed <clears throat> it is just going in every single direction as far as it can go the other thing about it so it's inefficient number 1 number 2 is that the earth happens to be round and when this goes out in every direction, it doesn't hug the curve of the earth. So we're not mm. actually having it go around the globe. It's only line of sight. Mm, now, okay. we've overcome this by creating something known as a coaxial cable, which actually guides Hertzian, captures it, and directs it. But what <clears throat> a fellow named Jonathan Zinnick postulated and proved mathematically many, many years ago, back at the turn of the last century, was that there was an electromagnetic field that existed around the Earth. So you can imagine if the, if the Earth was a balloon, and then you could mm -hmm. pop out another balloon, right, to mm -hmm. encompass yep. that balloon all the way around. That's existing there. And that if you could launch uh, the proper wavelength, that you could have it captured, much like a coaxial cable capture, captures Hertzian, 
Interesting. This Zenic wave could be caught between that magnetic band around the Earth, and then it could be directed, and it could be much more efficient. And so this technology was explored by a couple of really smart guys that spent their lives at the Pentagon. And when they retired, they decided to kick it out the door and make it work. And uh, we have known them now for about five years. And um, that, that is, those are the folks that we believe will develop this wireless transportation of electricity and data and communication on something known as the Zenic wave. So that is a tech that's coming out of the box that changes a variety <clears throat> of the ways that we do things. So the idea, so there, and there's a couple different uh, elements here. There's, there's data and then there's energy. Yeah. Um, and so, so on the data side, the, the, and I, I love the terms and the, the deep dive, you know, the balloon, right. We create kind of this other uh, atmosphere feel. We're able to like bounce it off that where it, or, or just within direct, <clears throat> where we decide like here's you know point a we can direct it to destination point b and hey i want to you know send energy where we want to send or data where we want to send it wirelessly that's the idea yes what we're doing is we're launching a wave from a tower okay so there's been much like you know widencliff right if you if you're a tesla guy um okay. you know he tried to do this up in new jersey <clears throat> and and um was shut down by J.P. Morgan because mm, J.P. Morgan was invested in copper. So you see how tech impacts business, right? J.P. Morgan oh, went, yeah. hey, you know, I'm going to lose my copper concession here because right now I've got current being transmitted over wires <clears throat> and I'm in the copper mine business, so I better shut down this wireless tech. So that's what he did. But yeah. um, so go ahead. Have, like, go ahead. Yeah. Go for it. Go ahead, man. I'm just getting so excited over here, George. I'm getting excited over here because, like, what 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 I really um what I really hope people are catching is the t the technology that you're focused on. Um, it, it's um I agree with you that it is coming, and the type of shift, the framework that was an excellent example. Another example that kicks into my head. Let's let's talk about Rockefeller and kerosene oil for lighting. Cause it just, right. cause it's an energy. And then we have Edison and Tesla coming out with DC and AC directed current. And, and right. guess what? Mm. JP, Mor not everyone knows it. JP Morgan, like the JP Morgan backed Edison to, right. to, right. And so he's, he's doing all this, but Rockefeller's like, hell no, because I'm supplying kerosene for all the freaking candles in the country. Right. And how, how about uh, any, so th there's all these campaigns of shutting it down, which, it's into an, another really powerful conversation for business owners in terms of um, decentralization versus central, like the powers that be. Why are they going to let power and wealth be distributed amongst the people in, in a technology uh, transfer like this? Right. <clears throat> and, you know, just to carry your example back one generation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, before kerosene, it was all whale oil, right? So you have right. fleets of vessels out there. You have men on the sea killing whales. Who really saved the whales? Rockefeller. Because he came in with kerosene, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you don't look at it that way. But, you know, energy, creative destruction made the entire whale oil industry unnecessary. Are yeah. we better off for the whales? Better off probably we are. Kerosene and fossil fuels have run their course. We now know that they're doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing. Whether you believe in, in whatever you believe in, I can tell you, having been in this industry forever and been at downing coal mines, see strip mining, I've seen fracking, I've seen the drilling, I've seen the burning of, of bunker fuel on vessels, I've seen the burning of bunker fuel, which is like a tar-like nasty substance that's left over after you refine all the good stuff out of oil. That's called bunker fuel. And they burn that. They don't waste a thing. All that stuff... There's better, cleaner ways to do it for our children and our grandchildren that makes them healthier and makes us a better world. And so we have to get that rolled out. Why doesn't it get rolled out? It doesn't get rolled out because every time there is a shift, do you think the whale owners, what if the whale owners, I mean, what if the yeah. whale boat owners would have controlled the banking system, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that, that Rockefeller would have gotten financed at that time? 
What we've done with the consolidation of power on Wall Street is that someone's ox always gets gored when there is a transition from A to B in terms mm -hmm. of the energy field. And so getting it done means that Wall Street is probably not going to do it. Why does MAD? Yeah. MAD has a platform where we go directly to the people and we allow them to back this transition and we allow them to be at the cutting edge of this transition. MAD is set up to allow the average person to come in and invest in MAD. We've taken it to the people and the people are going to be the solution to the problem. And the people will benefit from being that solution. That's the yeah. vision thing. You know, that's, I grew up in Baltimore. I was a blue collar guy. My, we, we built bridges. My family built bridges, right? We were mm -hmm. not, we were not wealthy folks. We were blue collar folks. And what's missing in America today. And what I want to see more of is a really strong middle class. And there's an energy transition happening. And if we can involve the people of America in backing it, not the politicians, not Wall Street, not Bezos, the people, they can get in on this now and we can reignite the middle class of America. I think it's really important to undo the stratification of wealth that has been created in America. We have people like Bezos and then we got people that can't pay the rent. We got people that can't put food in their children's mouths. We got people worried all the time. This is not a long-term good setting for the country or the world, and we need to address it. And one of the things that we're doing at MAD here is we're addressing it by offering the wealth that Bezos gobbled up during his transition to the normal people. I, I'm a lover of patterns, George. I'm a lover of patterns. And, and so everything you're saying um, reminds me of a pattern uh, that I, I like. It's just this is so ironic. I uh, Prime TV over the last weekend, there's this great series about the men that built America. And it's they focused on rock of the late 1800s, 1890s, right? Early 1900s, crazy decades, crazy development decades after the Civil War era, production, most productive, you know, era like in the country. It's Crazy Rockefeller, railroads, oil, electricity, and it's all these things happen. Carnegie, steel with Carnegie. Yep. And right mm -hmm. after there was kind of this new era. And I'm bringing up this example because it's a pattern that I think is very close to happening. Right. And so, and, and, and we're everyone listening, all of my investors stay tuned in with us right now. Cause you mentioned uh, some powerful things, George. You're saying, hey, this is an actual opportunity to bring wealth back to, to the common man. Well, that's exactly what happened with monopolies that were being taken place. And then Roosevelt takes office and starts taking down all these trusts, destroying uh, monopolies. And then this new fleet of businessmen came in, someone like Henry Ford, who, who created, uh, yes, assembly line and Model T, but he brought an automobile and, and a different, le and, uh, but f like great wages for workers in, in, you know, manufacturing and factories. He brought a lot different uh, increase in standard of living and prosperity to the common man. This is a pattern with a blend of decentralizing technology. Like a lot of things are happening with blockchain technology and tech and how all these are coming together, where if you're an investor, look, this used to be like a handful of people, elites that would make crazy different life-changing generational wealth where there's actors i don't know this is one of those shifts it's a pattern george so I'm, it's one I'm of just, those shifts yeah. yeah yeah and we are at the tip of the spear of that shift i've pulled together all of the of the expertise people who have spent their lives in the field yeah. and we are we have put together the business that leads that shift and now what we've done is we have opened it to the average person to come in and support it. That's never been done before as far as I know. And a lot of it has to do with blockchain. You mentioned blockchain, so we can get into that as well. Can I, 
so, so this, and I want to hang on this because I know we're talking, we're talking to business owners, entrepreneurs, and I, I want to give you some of my fears because I have a strong suspicion that I'm not the only one thinking and feeling this. As I've seen those patterns, I'm like, cool, there's good opportunity. Here's some of my fear. When Henry Ford was even going through the process, we know about Henry Ford because he overcame the patents that were owned by the powers that be at the time that said no one gets to manufacture automobiles except for who I say does. He was rejected multiple times, made multiple models, and we only know about him because he challenged somebody and broke through and got funding somehow, and, and that still was tied up in lawsuits for years, whereas there are all the other ones that tried. We never hear about them. I don't want to be one of those other people. I'm assuming everyone listening doesn't want to be. You say there's now a way. How do we know that you're, you're going to take on you know, the, the money and the power that's saying, oh, we're just going to come in and take over? How, you know, can, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. <clears throat> one of the, Why is um, it different now? Well, it's a different model that we're rolling out here. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're bringing a lot of people – into mad a lot we've made we've made our investment threshold ridiculously low for for many of our raises yeah. um the law has changed so that we're allowed to do this the, the law was until 2016 that you couldn't sell unregistered securities and, a, and an ownership interest in a okay. limited partnership is, is a security so therefore you either had to go to wall street and register it or you had to do a private what was called a reg D offering. And you had to hang out in the country club, pretend that you were wealthy, find a guy that was wealthy, convince him to invest in your company. And you, and, and the rule was <laughs> that if you weren't a millionaire already, you couldn't become a millionaire because they had what they call accredited investors. Right. And you, if you, yep. you had to be at that threshold before you could invest. So that meant that the rich got richer and the poor got poor in the stratification of society is the result that we see. That's, but that was the way all the way up until 2016 and it wasn't until 2018 that the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, rolled out new regulations that allowed us to advertise on regu unregulated securities. <clears throat> that gave me the uh, impetus to create a platform where we reached out to the regular people. But at the same time, when they, when they lifted what they call the solicitation rule, the anti-solicitation rule, they yeah. also made what's known as a Reg A, and I'm not talking about Jim Mar Barley. I'm talking about, you know, uh, it's called a reg regulation A. And then <clears throat> they also made regulation CF, which is crowdfunding. And yep. so those are available to anybody. Hallelujah. Now we can reach out to the middle class, get them involved in an early level and get them on board. Now, what you your your question was addressing risk profile, right? If I'm coming in, I want to make sure I don't lose. We've done a couple of things there. First of all, <clears throat> we've lowered the threshold of the CF raises to $500. You can come in with 500 bucks. That's insane. That's crazy. That Then we can move on the blockchain, which has allowed that to happen. And that's a really interesting story. But the thing is that, you know, look, if you're coming in for, if you're coming in for a million dollars, it's one thing. If you're coming in for $500, that's another thing entirely. And what we're trying to do is allow people to come in at that low level so that they can get on this bandwagon and they can be part of the success of MAD. And, and that does one of the reasons for that is my philosophical desire to restore the middle class because, you know, I'm a blue collar guy. And the other one is um, <clears throat> if there are a bunch of people involved, then the powers that be can't take them all out. Imagine if Tesla didn't just have JP Morgan as his backer, right? Yeah. So what we've done is I've, is I've diffused the backing so that nobody can pull our strings and take us out with this model. And that yeah. way our disruptive tech will be allowed to be rolled out. So that that's, that's, how come JP Morgan won't take us out like he took Tesla out? Yeah. I uh, it's yeah. I built the model differently. Uh and that's that's how that rolls. But we also yeah. if, if if you'd like me to, I can go back to the risk profile question, which is a great question. Yeah, please. Okay. 
So <clears throat> one of the um, one of the things that early on we had the good fortune of doing was we 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 had a relationship with a company that was rolling out uh, next generation data centers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and data centers are one of the dirtiest operations there are. A lot of them are operated on coal. And so they do put a lot of um, <clears throat> dirty in terms of energy. the atmosphere. Sorry. Uh, dirty in terms of energy. Dirty in terms of energy. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> Many of them are operated on coal, you know, coal fired power plants. And this, yep. this particular data center operation uh, was given the mandate to build the cleanest operations that they possibly could. And so there was a bid process. We were asked to bid, several other companies bid, and MAD won the bid to supply the clean energy to the rolling out. Congrats. That's awesome. Of, thank you very much. And these are massive data centers. Um, the, the power required for, these, oh my for one data center is a gigawatt. <clears throat> so that is 1,000 megawatts. A megawatt can power 200 homes in Norway during the winter, right? So it's a lot of power. <clears throat> These are massive power sucks. But what yep. it does is it gives us, if it, you know, some of your tech people will know the term sandbox. So like in Arizona, they set up a sandbox where fintech could come in and fintech could explore legally and build new models and things. So you get to play in your sandbox, right? So what, what these yeah. data centers are for us is they're a sandbox. We get to deploy our tech. What do we have? We have a customer. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every business needs those. <laughs> yeah, customer. I was on a panel one time in uh, Silicon Valley <clears throat> with, a, with a fellow who was one of the founders of Apple. He was a multi-billionaire now, and he was a great guy. And they asked him, what was the secret to your success? If I'm a new guy coming along, what is it that I need and I got to have and he, one word, he said, customers. I thought it was the most brilliant answer I'd ever heard. When it comes down to it, you got to have a customer, right? Yes. Well, through the yeah. grace of God, we, we, we had this sort of fall into our lap. I mean, we had our relationships. We had our experience. We had our expertise. We put together a better plan than anybody else had put together for providing clean energy to these data centers. But now we have our customer. We can yeah. roll out our, our tech and we, we can roll it out in these you know, 16 data centers being stood up. 16 over data centers. Yeah, baby. Congrats. So I was just going to ask this, uh, all business owners, entrepreneurs listening. It's like, yeah, of course, like acquisition is a big part of the thing. So you've, you've got 16 now that you're starting to roll the technology out on. Correct. Let's go. We got our built-in customer. Does that reduce your risk profile? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I, I, I think it's just important for everyone to hear. I, I didn't know that, so including myself, right? Where I'm like, I was curious in where you're at in the process. How has yep. the, you know, the technology's there? Great. Let's just see it in application. Something right. that as we're talking mm -hmm. that, and I always just try to think as practically as things as I can and think about what's happening in the market. Here's one small example. I'd love to hear your take on it. Um, we link. It's so we have. Uh, um, data providers, internet providers, Cox, and, and uh, what there's, I don't know, one other one, uh, direct link. I don't know. There's something else, right? Um, and so those are CenturyLink. There it is. Cox and CenturyLink. Well, WeLink shows up and says, look, we're going to install like nothing out of pocket. You can try it for 30 days. And they're going to hook up some tower. And they're saying 700 megabyte download speed and upload speed from towers. <clears throat> yeah. So, so what my, my one, I have a few questions. My one question is the technology that you're doing, um, how, is it, is it similar? Like they're just basically leveraging powers and sending all this data somehow wirelessly. Mm -hmm. That's a big, if any, so this is, those this are is, line, uh, those, those are line yeah. of sight. We link <clears throat> they're, they're, okay. um, I, I believe, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but I believe yeah, them so. to be, I believe them to be a usage of 5g direct line of sight microwave, right? So your technology is even beyond. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ours blows that away. I mean, the, the wireless tech, the, the Zenic wave is way beyond that because this is line yeah. of sight tower to tower. It it's is. also microwave, which means that it, it, <clears throat> the shorter the wave, uh, a couple of things happen with short waves. They're, they're less efficient over long distance in carrying yeah. data or carrying anything. 
So you need more. The the reason that we have all these little um, 5G towers being put on buildings and things like that, and they're talking about putting on light light posts and stuff, you know, they're all over the place, right? Is because microwave is an inefficient. It's great. You know, in your in your kitchen, you push the button and it and it goes to the chicken breast. You know, but but I mean that that's only about this far, right? But you want to you if you want to try to carry electricity on on a on a on a high frequency wave, it it is the most inefficient way to do it. You can't really do it. You need a long, very very low wave to carry it. Yeah, yeah, Interesting. yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's so, but um, it's kind of like that. But but just so you understand, I can I can put up one tower. And I can launch a, a wave that encompasses the globe. That's crazy. And then all I have to do is put receivers out there. And the receivers receive. And it just yeah. imagine if you built in a receiver, you miniaturize the receiver. We're talking to University of Arizona has a miniaturization expertise of, of all kinds of things. A lot of the things that have been made smaller in the world have been made smaller at the university of Arizona. It's such a great niche right there. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Like yeah. niche yeah, down yeah. It's a lot of irony. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I, so, so here, th- there's so many more questions I want to ask you now, now, George, we might have to have you come back out for a second conversation, maybe like a, a follow-up pay hey, worth, you know, where are things at now kind of thing. You come uh, out and that see makes- us. We'll do it together. Hey, there we go. Uh, out, you're in Idaho, right? Is that yeah, right? man. Come to Sandpoint, baby. We'll give you the whole. We'll give you the whole lowdown. <laughs> the whole lowdown. I like it. Yeah. Well, if everyone listening and getting a taste of this, I have before we get to our final question. Everyone listening to this, leaning in, understanding that look, our world is like the tech boom um, hasn't even started. There's no. there's a lot of big technology out there that are drastically going to be changing our lives. They're already starting to change our lives, <clears> and so. <throat> bringing real people, getting real results. I thought this was very relevant. And anyone that wants to know more about this, I'm assuming this is the best place to go. Mad.energy. That'd do it. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. Okay. Is there any uh, other, uh, just go there, check out the site and get more information, continue leaning into yeah. it. Go ahead. And and you can actually, that'll link you up to the investment platforms where you can join the team. 500 bucks, you can, okay. you, you can become a member of the MAD team. You can be part of the solution to the problem. You can motivate, you know, you can, you can accelerate all of everything that we're talking about. Uh, you can be in on. And uh, not crazy. only does it help the world and change everything as we're discussing, but we believe and our projections would indicate that you're going to make a very good return. So it's, you know, it's the classic of doing good while doing good, you know? So it's yeah. uh, it, it, doing good while doing well, I guess. But it's, uh, you know, so take a look at it. And uh, that website links you into the investment vehicles and things. And there's different ways you can get in on it. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions once you're there, just, you know, let us know. It's a very well, interactive that, website. Interactive. I was going to say, because, and I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, what is the best way to communicate? I see you have some videos here. Is it sending an email? Is it? You can uh, send an email. It? Yep. You can go on, you okay. can, you can click the invest now button uh, yep. and, and you can, that'll take you to, <clears throat> you know, and that doesn't mean you've spent a dime guys. You just, you can go and look, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, <clears throat> that'll take you to all the materials. It'll show you how it happens. Um, but this broad decentralization of investment is, is a critical key to rolling out disruptive technology that will change the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we decentralize that. We're, we are decentralized in our investment approach. We're decentralized in a lot of ways, you know, blockchain, we didn't get to that, but, but, you know, ultimately we want to get everyone off the grid. We want to get everybody basically their own power. And uh, just imagine that. Well, and, and uh, it's seeing this, Ah, there's just there's there's something here and uh, this was fun to have this conversation because you know we had we have not met you know prior to this conversation and uh looking into this and I, i'm seeing other tech companies pop up this it's different technology it's in the same industry and mm-hmm. they're they're applying um i haven't heard of this one yet and so they're they're applying different ways of managing data and energy and so when i'm and i'm not i'm not talking like people that are like really far down the tech rabbit hole or anything. I'm talking about like friend that's a realtor. That's like, Oh, my buddy set up this thing and he's gathering in for me. 
I just want everyone to know, like, listen, like there's, there's stuff happening in the market. And so, Hey, thank you for being on the front line, sharing, you know, what's going on. The last question that I have for you, um, is, is around blockchain. And so, um, I was just curious to hear how are you guys leveraging crypto or blockchain as it pertains to the, the real tangible company that has real customers and a real service? How, yeah, yeah. how is, what is the relationship here? Well, we're, um, the way that I was able to get the barrier to entry so low, 500 bucks, was through blockchain tech. We tokenized our offering. So <clears throat> when you buy a unit in MAD, what you get is a token. At the okay. end of the day, when the, when the offerings close, we issue out a token. So we have tokenized the equity in MAD. We're only the third company to ever do it. And uh, we're the first energy company to do it. And <clears throat> this allows us to lower the transaction cost, allowing people to come in at a much lower. Just imagine if you have to have lawyers look at every single transaction and oh give gosh. you documents and papers and limited partnerships, so smart contracts. everything like that, right? So we reduced all that to a smart contract on the blockchain. We cut the lawyers out of it, me being an attorney. We cut the lawyers out. We reduced the transaction costs. Basically, I paid all the money for people to come on a board up front by doing all the work to make sure that it was regulatorily uh, compliant and that it worked and that the smart contract was written correctly and that the tokens would be issued legally to the, to the token holder. We did all that up front. And once we established all that and we merged all that tech, there's there's so much tech under our website, you can't believe it. So once yeah. we did all that, once we mint those tokens, they go out to the unit holder. That reduced my transaction cost in onboarding partners. So now I can fulfill the vision of letting the middle class non-accredited investors be, be, be part of the solution of the Better. problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how that was. So blockchain is pretty integral to it. And then we have some computer tech that we could talk about next time that is just going to change everything, which is going to help uh, autonomous vehicles. It's really critical to the operation of yeah. autonomous vehicles. And it is helpful in the balancing of an electromagnetic electric grid, which is what we're creating uh. with the wireless tech. So how do you balance that? How do you make sure that the amount of electricity going into the grid is equal to the amount of electricity coming out of the grid because most people don't understand that there's no storage of electricity within the grid. So there's a lot of calculations that go into balancing a grid. So our guys, we got rocket scientists on that one, babe. Uh, it's, it feels like you would need a rocket scientist for managing input output for a grid. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, George, uh, um, I really appreciate you spending some time with our audience today, uh, giving us just a little glimpse, uh, inside track. Um, everyone listening, everyone listening, watching this, um, there's multiple things that they're executing on, but there's also how mad energy is executing on these things. For example, if you're an agency owner, if you're a SaaS owner like myself, if, and you're looking to simply raise funds, uh, how they're going about raising funds is a very interesting process that could be replicated for you and your business and your family and the legacy that you're doing. There's multiple things. So I always like to look at people that are doing extraordinary things, but I always like to listen to what they're saying, but also watch what they're doing. And so George is a fantastic, and his t an entire team, because it's not just you, George. <laughs> you have a whole Definitely massive not. team around you. Definitely <laughs> not. We got, so, we got a team that I am so proud of. You know, yeah, and they're yeah. great people. They're wonderful, dedicated people here. So uh, it's not just me. I think up crazy yeah. things, but I don't do them. They do. <clears throat> <laughs> that's where the that's where the teamwork comes in. So hey, hey, everyone listening, watching Flowchat Fam, thank you for uh, joining us in the, today's uh, Spotlight series, and also George, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Chris. Great to see you.